Welcome to service. Thank you so much for being here. I have uh, three quick announcements uh, today. Uh, first announcement, we will be having communion today. It's B-O-Y-E, bring your own elements. Um, so don't worry about it. Just if you have, you know, some grape juice or some wine and some form of bread, uh, get that out. Uh, we'll do what we did the last few weeks, which is that you'll be prompted later on in service, much later on in service, to go ahead and um, I'll do the dialogue. You guys do the Lord's Prayer and words of institution and all that sort of stuff. And we'll be able to go ahead and have communion at home like we have the last few weeks. Um... One of the questions I got was, oh, what happens if you guys get ahead of me? In other words, I'm running around chasing down the kiddos and all of a sudden I realize, oh no, I missed the words of institution. Do not worry. All you got to do is go ahead and rewind. And yes, even if you're watching it live, you can rewind. Uh, second announcement. Uh, this is pre-recorded, as all of them are these days in the world of COVID. And so um, if you filed a prayer request, obviously there's a delay between when we record this and when we publish this um, to give time for production. And so um, if the prayer request comes in there, you'll see it in the comments section rather than said out loud. You know, just one of those realities of uh, recording things. Uh, third, and, and super important, we do have an update from the COVID-19 Advisory Committee, which is a committee of experts um, that we put together from folks in our congregation. Uh, first thing I want to say to that committee, thank you, thank you, thank you for all your hard work. Um, second is that the committee has been working over the last few weeks. They just met this past Tuesday, I believe that was the 21st. Um, and they went ahead and are working on a survey. Now, their hope with the survey is to just get a feel for what the congregation's thinking, feeling in regards to if, when, and how reopening would look like, um, those sorts of things. Um, and so what uh, I want you guys to do is go ahead and just keep an eye out um, over the next number of weeks uh, for that survey to go out, and obviously there will be more announcements as it gets ready to go out. I just, um, I think everyone felt like, oh, we should probably, you know, keep people in the loop the best we can. And so we always like to give you up-to-date information. And the up-to-date information is they're working on a survey that should hopefully be done relatively soon. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and begin worship. Now for confession and forgiveness. Diligent Lord, who watches over us at all times. Be with us all these days. We confess that we have allowed a host of worries and frustrations to crowd out your word for us. As you give us peace and your transforming love, also forgive all those times when we have been less than faithful disciples. Gently visit us again with your healing powers. Restore our hope and courage and joy for all the times of head. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Creator, still creator. 
Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord of mustard seeds and yeast, we come to you this day seeking your word and will for us. Make us people who care deeply about the well-being of others. Give us courage to be yeast for the rising of hope and peace throughout your world. Open our hearts to your redeeming love, for we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. An introduction for our first lesson. Because Solomon did not ask for long life, riches, or the defeat of his enemies, God gave him what he asked for, wisdom to govern the people well. The first lesson is from the third chapter in 1 Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. This ends the first lesson. Um, we're about to have an incredible anthem. Um, and when I learned that we were going to sing this, and then I learned that this is one of the first times we had sung this as a community, I, I got so excited because it is one of my favorite all-time songs um, uh, that I've known my, uh, most of my life. Um, and so I'm really excited to get a chance to introduce this song to you, okay? It's Lift Every Voice and Sing. Um, it is one of these songs with an amazingly rich history. Though I, I will say, like, I'm getting what I'm going to read today comes from the hymnal companion of the ELW here. Um, that is a rich history of what's in the ELW. Um, if you love uh, musical history, it's something worth owning. Um, but, but just to give you a glimpse at the background of the song uh, and the things you should be listening for. See, around the turn of the 20th century, some African-American or black men wanted to honor Abraham Lincoln and his Emancipation Proclamation. So they asked James W. Johnson uh, to write something. He wrote the text in 1900 on February 12th, Lincoln's birthday. A chorus of school children at an all-black Stanton school in Jacksonville, Florida, sang it at an assembly honoring Lincoln. School children elf elsewhere in Florida quickly picked it up. It spread beyond the state, and by the mid-century it had become known as the Black National Anthem. In its poetry, closer to the high art poetry than to hymnody poetry, that celebrates liberty without neglecting the reality of the stony road and of the blood of the slaughtered. Remarkably, however, it moves with hope through silent tears, without fury... Uh, fury that could be easily and understandably expected. It is an amazing song. It is a song that goes back to 1900 that has been sung in civil rights marches, you know, after the First World War, during clashes in the 40s over integration of the military, during clashes in the 60s trying to get rid of Jim Crow and segregation in the South, and, and it's still sung today. I, I've been, you know, at marches where it is sung, and it is just this amazing song. So please sit back, listen, and just soak in the deep spirituality and amazingness of this great piece of work.
to our second lesson. These words celebrate the death of God's actions for us. Through Christ's death for us and for the activity of the Spirit praying for us, we are fused to God's love poured out in Jesus Christ. Nothing, not even death itself, is able to separate us from such incredible divine love. The second lesson is from the eighth chapter in Romans. Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those who he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
This ends the second lesson. An introduction for our gospel lesson. Throughout Matthew's gospel, Jesus and his disciples proclaim the good news that the kingdom of heaven is near. Here, Jesus offers several brief parables that explore the implications of the announcement for people's lives. The gospel lesson according to Matthew chapter 13, glory to you, O Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put all the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out, and they, they will separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hey, it is so good to see you guys today. Um, this is the kids' sermon, so if you guys could come forward at this time, that would be wonderful. So, today we learn about yeast. Now, yeast is an interesting, fun thing. It is this... Um, microorganism, meaning it's itty bitty little small critters. Yeah, it's actually alive. And when you put it in dough, the little critters eat the sugar in the dough. And then they fart and they burp a lot. And that's why when you look at bread that's like cooked, you'll see lots of little holes where there's bubbles um, clearly used to be. That's the yeast farts. And so you might be wondering, why is Jesus saying he's like farting microorganisms? Well, because yeast does something really amazing, which is that because of that fart that yeast does, it expands the bread, making it fluffy and yummy and crusty on the outside and soft on the inside. In fact, almost all your favorite versions of bread are going to have yeast in them. Even, well, these guys. Yes, even the not-as-good pretzel version of these guys all have yeast in them. Because without it, it would be flat and relatively tasteless. Well, like, well, these guys. And so what God is trying to get at is that when we talk about having a relationship with them, of course you have the choice not to. And of course you can survive without having a relationship with them. But life goes from a world of eating this to a world of eating these things. And that is the wonders of yeast in your life. Amen. So I saw a great meme the other day. Um, and it basically, I think, summed up how I, I think a lot of us feel about how 2020 is going so far. Now that we're six months or well, seven months into it. Um, it, it said, if 2020 was a drink, what drink would it be? And the person responded, colonoscopy prep. Right? Right? Like, isn't that how 2020 feels? Like, remember January? Remember January when we thought we had it bad? You know, Australia was like on fire and we were like, oh my goodness, an entire continent is dealing with massive wildfires like we've never seen. This is a massive human tragedy. This is probably, the, and I remember people saying it, this is the tragedy of 2020. Oh man, were we wrong. For those of you who haven't tuned in this year, it's been a pretty rough year out there. We've had we are currently 
either in the second or third worst economic disaster we've ever seen, and it's not yet over. We have a pandemic that's probably that has made it to the second rank level of um, problem, only being beaten by the pandemic of 1918, but it's not over yet. Please hear sarcasm in that. In the middle of an election year, um, so that always, you know, makes things even more fun, right? Uh, let alone protests and riots and murder hornets. I mean, 2020, not, a, not turning out to be a stellar year, and we're only halfway through it. And so I don't know about you, sometimes I get so disheartened. Like, I'm just like, seriously, God, like, what do you have on deck for August? Like, come on. Are we, like, checking off the plagues list? Like, seriously. And I don't know if you felt that way, but God knows I have. But when I start feeling that way, I do have a scripture verse. One of my favorites in the entire Bible that I fall back on. And it's the one we read in Romans. So I know everyone would love to hear something on mustard seeds or yeast or whatever. But, but, but man, you, you got to love this Romans text, especially right there at the end. Because I think right there at the end, it, it sums up everything. Everything we need to remind ourselves about 2020. Um, and, and let me just read it to you again. Because like I said, it, it is one of my favorite, favorite texts of the Bible. I am sure that nothing can separate us from God's love, not life, not death, not angels or spirits, not the present, not the future, and not powers above or powers below. Nothing in all of creation can separate us from God's love for us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right? This is an amazing thing. But, but scripture, even if it's on our hearts, can sometimes, at least for me, um, feel dead against my own despair or my own just overwhelmedness, if that's a word, though I'm not beyond creating my own words, um, that 2020 feels like. And, 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 and if it falls sort of without tone to you, or if it falls cliche to you, I would ask you to remember that one of the great things about the fact that scripture is alive is that we can go back and see how it was used for people who lived through what we lived through. And I know there's lots of folks saying, oh, this is the worst we've ever seen. We have never been through so many bad things. And, and it's bad out there. I mean, totally. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. But it's not the worst we've ever seen. It's not even the worst that any given generation has ever seen. You may ask, well, what do you mean? I say, well, let's talk about a generation that we don't talk about in the U.S. A generation, in fact, its name is because we don't talk about them. That generation's name is the lost generation. Right? That's ominous. The lost generation, who were they? They were a group of folks who were born in 1890s to 1900, 100 years ago. And... If you followed the life of anyone in there, what they lived through, assuming that they lived, was being born in there. They would have first lived through the First World War, where 116,000 plus Americans die in a brutal, horrific war. They then would have lived through a pandemic that even our current pandemic pales in comparison to a few years later. They then would have gotten one decade off. We know that as the Roaring Twenties, except for that decade was full of gangsters, Al Capone, organized crime, and prohibition, which fueled it all. They lived through the social upheaval of women's suffrage and protests in the streets, and even violence. People forget the suffragettes had both peaceful and non-peaceful means. That would have been their youth, into their 20s. By the time they were in their 30s and 40s and 50s, they would have had the Great Depression. And a few years later, they would have had the Second World War. 
In fact, most of the commanders, people like Patton and, or political leaders like Churchill or Roosevelt, they, they were part of that generation. See, that generation lived through it all. Lived through the most tumultuous, insane time in U.S. history, at least arguably. I mean, I think the guys in the Civil War probably could give them a run for their money, but that generation took a lot, dealt with a lot, survived a lot. And so when we look back at a generation that survived more than what we're going through, at least now, one of the things that strikes me as positive is over and over you read this verse. Over and over you see this statement that neither life nor death nor angels nor spirits nor things present nor things in the future nor powers above nor powers below can separate us from the love of God. It was that scripture written on their heart that went ahead and had them pick up those guns and stop the Kaiser in World War I, had them bury their friends and family during the great flu pandemic of 1918, had them get up again and deal with organized crime and social upheaval through the 20s, had them go ahead and yet again stand up and survive the Great Depression, had them yet again go out and command the world through the Second World War, had them get up again and again. Why? Because they knew in their heart of hearts, as I hope we remember in our heart of hearts, that no matter what the present brings, or no matter what the present is, or what the future brings, nothing that you do or anybody else can separate you from a key reality. The reality is God loves you. And the one thing I will tell you I know is wrong is anyone who says, no, Pastor Matt, God doesn't love me. Because if you think that for any reason, I can tell you right now, you're wrong. And if you ask me, where do I see that in scripture? I'd say right here. Because in all of creation, we know nothing separates us from that love. No matter how good or bad today, yesterday, or tomorrow is or will be. God loves you. So take that. Put it on your heart this week. And if you feel that moment of overwhelmness, that moment of despair, that moment going, where in the world is God? Know that the answer is simple. He's with you. And he loves you. For nothing can separate us from the love of God. Thank you.
let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Join me for the prayers of the people. Dear God, be with all the nations of the world experiencing strife or violence or under threat these days. We pray especially for Egypt, South Sudan, Sudan, Hong Kong, and Yemen. May your peace and reconciliation be find those countries through the troubles ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the peoples of the world who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, that you may lead scientists and doctors, healthcare workers and frontline workers of all types. Lead them to work with responsibility, with haste and with you in mind. Empower them and give them strength during these times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick or suffering in any way. Today we pray especially for Jane, Arlene, Mary Jane, Elaine, Wayne, Becky, Cindy, Tess, Vicki, Kate, Katie, Joyce, Mary, Lewis, Carol, Steve, Sandy, Travis, Keith, Sue, Noe, Jean, Katie, Joy, Patty, Dennis, David, Wendy, Ron, Betty, Wally, Sandy, and Cindy. We pray especially for Annette Pamperin at the death of her brother. May they know your healing arms around them in the days, months, and years in the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May our prayers rise like incense before you today and all days. Amen. We're about ready to pass the peace. So when I say peace be with you and you say also with you, what I want you to do is say that as many times as you can in the comment lines to each other. If you're not a comment line sort of person, if you're on Facebook, hit the hug emoji. That's a little emoji holding a heart. Hit that as repeatedly, quickly as you can. Uh, or you can just go with the heart emoji. Um, you know, just show everyone how much we miss and love them in this time apart. All right. The, the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, our self, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered 
in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It is just about time for communion. Um, so just a reminder, what's going to happen is you're going to keep the words. They're still going to be there for you. Um, so don't worry if you don't have a bulletin or anything. We will have on the screen everything you need to say. We're going to have beautiful music in the background going on um, while this is happening. If you get to a situation where you're like, oh no, they've jumped all the way to the Lord's Prayer and I haven't said the prayers of institution. Ah, first of all, eh, I wouldn't worry too much. And the reason you don't have to worry too much is you can always go back. Even in a live stream situation, you can simply go back. Just rewind it like you would any other video online. And I'm sure if you don't know how to do that, there's probably somebody with you who can show you how to do that. Um, or you can ask one of our commentators online, uh, just put it in the comments line, we'll help you out, okay? Um, but if you get thrown, just ask for help, okay? Uh, outside of that, just follow the instructions as you see on the screen. If you get behind us, don't worry, you just jump forward. You might miss my post-communion prayer, but don't worry, I'll be okay. Um, so please, B-O-Y-B, bring your own elements and get prepared. I'll start you off with a great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Please join me for the post-communion prayer. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send love to conquer fear, water to give new life, and bread of life to nourish your people. 
Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Go forth with joy, celebrating all the many ways for us to serve the Lord. Give us courage, hope, peace, and love that we might bear these gifts towards others. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.